Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to tell you about stress and strain. First, I will tell you about pressure and then we will go to stress and strain. Pressure is the external force acting on the unit area of an object or it is the force per unit area. The stress is same as pressure force per unit area that develops in the body in response to the external pressure. So what happens is when we apply pressure on an object, a counter force or a counter pressure develops within the body and this counter force is known as stress. So the stress and pressure are equal in magnitude and the force that develops in response to the pressure is opposite in direction as you can see in the animation below. Here the black arrow represents the applied force or the pressure and in response to this force, a force develops in the object or from the rest. Here it is shown by red arrow. The red arrow is directed opposite to the black arrow. So you can see there are two forces. The black one is pressure and the red one is stress. They are mutually opposing but they are equal in magnitude. So such a couple of force where the magnitude is equal but the direction is opposite is known as a couple. The strain is the deformation resulting in an object under stress. So change in dimension because of stress is known as strain. Now what are the units of stress and strain? The unit of stress same as pressure is Newton per meter square or Pascal. Strain does not have any unit and it is expressed in percentage as it represents change in dimension. Next, let's go to stress distribution within an object or the stress gradient. Although the stress is considered uniform throughout the object, but in reality, the stress decreases from the point of application and then it again increases towards the rest that is support. So in the center of the object, the stress is minimum whereas it is maximum at the surfaces. Now before I go to different types of stresses and strains, let me tell you a little bit about strength. Strength is the stress at which some permanent deformation or failure that is fracture or breakage occurs in the object. For example, yield strength is the stress at which limited initial permanent deformation occurs in an object. So the stress at which first permanent deformation occurs is yield strength. Next is fracture strength. Fracture strength is the stress at which failure or fracture occurs in the object. Now let's go to the stress concentration. Imagine what would happen if a flaw exists in the object. It has some flaw or some defect within it or on the surface. So what would happen? When the stress is applied to this object, more stress will be experienced around this flaw, especially if the flaw is oriented perpendicular to the direction of the force. As you can see in this animation, the force is applied along the axis, whereas this flaw is oriented perpendicular to it. And this property, that is the concentration of stress or more stress felt around a flaw is known as stress concentration. And the stress concentration leads to early failure of the object. Now, since we are concerned about dental material, remember whatever direct or indirect restorations we make. So, direct restorations means amalgam, composite, etc. And indirect means crown, inlay, onlay, etc. So, whatever these restorations are, they have some defects. They have some inherent flaws. At least most of them will have some flaw, if not all. So, the restorations might fail at a much lower stress in the oral cavity than we expect them to because of this stress concentration. 
Let's now see the different types of stresses and strains. The stress and strains can be divided into two categories, simple and complex. The simple stresses are compressive, tensile and shear. And the corresponding strains would be compression, tension and shear strain. The complex stresses are flexural or bending stress and torsion. And the corresponding strains would be bending strain or flexure and torsion or twisting. Let's start with compressive stress and strain. Look at the animation here and you would notice that the couple of force is directed towards the object. So the force is trying to compress the object. Let me tell you again, a couple means the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Notice here that the forces are applied in the same plane. So the forces here are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction and in the same plane. And the result is compression or shortening of the object. So an example of compressive force used in dentistry would be amalgam condensation. So that's the easier one to remember. Next, let's go to tensile stress and strain. Here, the couple of force is directed away from the object and the forces again are acting in the same plane and this would result in elongation of the object. So an example of use of tensile stress in dentistry would be adaptation of margin of a metal crown or inlay or onlay. So you can see in this animation when the margin of the crown is adapted it gets elongated. So that's how we are able to adapt the margin. Next is shear stress and strain. Here the couple of forces may be directed either towards the object or away from the object and the forces as you can see in this animation act in different planes and this would result in distortion of the object. Such forces are encountered in the oral cavity during chewing cycle. Next let's go to flexural stress and strain. Flexural stress is also known as bending force. Unlike the stresses that we have seen so far where we had just one rest and one force, here we have at least two supports and one force and this force is acting in the center of the object. An object under flexure or the object on which a flexural stress is applied will experience all the three types of stresses that we have studied so far that is compression, tension and shear. So take a look at this animation, the side on which force is applied that side would experience compression, the opposing side would experience tension and shear is seen at the supports. Flexure in the oral cavity may be seen in case of a bridge. In a bridge that is supported at both the ends, for example a 3 unit bridge or a 4 unit bridge, shows compression on the occlusal side, tension on the gingival side and shear stresses are seen on the abutment. Now compared to this, when we use a bridge that is supported only at one end, that is in case of a cantilever bridge, the flexural stresses would result in tension on the occlusal side and compression on the gingival side and shear same as the 3 unit or 4 unit bridge would be seen on the support or the abutment. So you can see that uh, compared to a 3 unit or a 4 unit bridge, in a cantilever bridge, the tension and compression have changed their places. Let's now see how to calculate flexural strength of a material. Two methods have been used to calculate flexural strength. These are 3 point flexural strength and 4 point flexural strength test. In a 3 point flexural strength test, the test specimen is supported on both the ends and a force is applied in the center till the specimen fractures. 
the formula to calculate flexural strength is 3 P L upon 2 W T square. Here P is the force applied on the specimen till it fractures and L is the length of the specimen, W is width and T is the thickness of the object. The problem with this method of calculation is that the specimen often do not fracture at the point of force application. So the force may be slightly off centered and in such a case correction may be needed. So a better way to calculate strength would be to use a four point flexural strength. In this method the specimen is supported at both the ends just like the three point test and two equal forces are applied on either side of the center of the specimen. The distance between these two forces is about half the length of the specimen and individual force is represented as P by 2 or you can say half P. So the total force that is uh, these both the forces combined would be written as P. The formula to calculate flexural strength by this method is 3 P L divided by 4 W T square. Here again P is the total force applied till the specimen fractures. L is the length of the specimen, W is the width and T is the thickness of the specimen. Next is the torsional stress and strain. This is the twisting stress and a simple example of the application of this stress is opening the cap of a bottle. As you can see in this video, the top hand applies anti-clockwise force to the cap while the lower hand provides the support and thus it applies the clockwise force. So you can see here that the couple of rotational forces are clockwise and anti-clockwise. They are obviously equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and also they are in different planes and the example in dentistry is seen in orthodontics. Uh, so say uh, twisting of a wire when you tie a ligature wire uh, these torsional forces are used. At the end of this video let me also tell you something about Poisson's ratio. Whenever there is a strain along the axis of the object there is also a strain along the lateral surface. So when an object is compressed along its axis, it expands along its lateral surface and when an object is elongated, its diameter or its thickness reduces. The ratio of this lateral strain to its axial strain is called the Poisson's ratio. So the ratio of lateral strain to axial strain is Poisson's ratio and it does not have any unit and for enamel, dentine and most of the dental materials, the poison ratio has a value of about 0.3. So that's all for now. Uh, I'll see you soon with more videos on other properties of dental materials. I hope this video was helpful. Please do like, comment and share this video. Thank you.